massive towers of Collinwood climb into the night, a sight at once familiar and yet strange, for this is Collinwood in another band of time where all its inhabitants lead other lives, lives both familiar and strange, like the house itself. But the one man aware of this awesome phenomenon lies trapped in the unremitting darkness of a chained coffin, while around him swirl events that hold a hint of terror yet to come. Mother! Mother! Daniel? Daniel? What is it? It's just a dream. Oh, poor darling. You'll be all right. Only a dream. Only, only what? You've got to promise something. Promise what, Daniel? That you won't lie to me. No, I won't lie to you. You always tell me the truth. Do you promise? Yes, I promise. Well, I won't tell anyone. I swear. Tell anyone what, Daniel? Remember, you promised. You really are my mother, aren't you? You really are. Tell me, please. Answer my question. He had a nightmare. But he's all right now, aren't you, Dad? You aren't going to answer my question. You know I'm not your mother. And if you weren't half asleep, you wouldn't even ask me such a I'm question. I'm not half asleep. I'm awake. Then I'm your Aunt Alexis. And I love you very much. And I want to help you as much as I can. I think the best way to do that right now is to is to straighten up these covers and get you back to sleep as soon as possible. Hmm? Don't you agree, Quentin? Absolutely. What's the matter? Isn't that the way you like your pillow? It's just right. Oh, well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. As a matter of fact... What? It's... It's exactly the way... Yes? Well, it's exactly the way... You know. Exactly the way your mother used to do it. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that the way to straighten and plump a pillow is fairly universal knowledge. Well, but that little singing noise you made... Oh, you mean... Uh... That's it. Well, your mother and I both learned that from your grandmother. When she taught us how to make a bed, she used to inadvertently sing that little song, and we imitated her, song and all, without realizing it. I understand. Daniel, I know how much you wish your mother was still alive. But you've got to try to face life the way it is. I Now, you try to get some sleep. You'll feel so much better tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Daniel. Good night. What do you see? Stars in opposition, the heavens in turmoil, signs in disarray. You must be aware. Of what? some alien forces at work against you. Can this uh, alien force be of the spiritual world? I can only conjecture, but my answer is yes. Then you can anticipate my next question. You want to know if it's the spirit of my niece, Angelique, don't you? Well? You know as well as I do that the charts convey nothing of that meaning. Look, I swear to you, this woman up at uh, Collinwood that's posing as Alexis is really Angelique. Now, I have to have proof in order to, to end this uncertainty that's driving me out of my mind. Now, that's why I brought you here tonight. 
I'm afraid I can be of no help to you now. But tomorrow, I will be back with another tale to tell. You have some way of finding out the truth. Angelique and Alexis are my nieces. Don't you suppose I can tell them apart? No, I don't think that anyone can tell whether or not that woman at Collinwood is Angelique. When will you remember that I have ways to see that are not confined to the eye? Tomorrow, I will come again. And before nightfall, you will know which of my nieces is at Collinwood. Angelique or Alexis. You know, it breaks my heart the way David and Daniel are so insistent that I'm his mother. Well, maybe I shouldn't have been so impatient with him. But it'll take time before he gets to know me as I really am. Until then, he's bound to be confused. We'll just have to accept it. Do you agree? What is it, Quentin? Nothing. Oh. I know exactly what you're thinking. I'm sitting here pruning this plant, just as you've seen Angelique do a thousand times, am I right? Yes, it uh, was just one of her habits. Our mother's influence again. It was she who taught us to care for plants and shrubbery, flowers. Consequently, every time Angelique or I ever got near a plant, we began to trim and prune it. <laughs> habits of childhood, I guess, always stay with you. Yes, I guess so. You excuse me. Yes, of course. Oh, well, Quentin, what would Angelique have done with these dead leaves? I don't want to just leave them here for Hoffman to clean up. I don't remember what she did. I don't think it matters. But in that case, I'll just throw them in the fire. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what she did. You don't intend to tell me what you're going to do, do you? I've already told you. I intend to discover whether Alexis is Alexis. But how? <laughs> Let that question keep you company through what may be a long, long night. <laughs> Still awake? Yes. Sorry, I just can't sleep. I keep going over it and over it in my mind. And, and I know if she hadn't seen you, it'd all be different now. Different? How, then? When I asked her if she was my mother, she was about to answer. And I know that answer would have been yes. never come to see your great aunt anymore, Daniel. Why is that? I don't know, Aunt Hannah. I do. It's because your father doesn't want you to. Well, never mind. It's all right. <laughs> it's good to see you again. You really came to see her, though, didn't you? My niece, Alexis. And is there any reason why I shouldn't have? No, I guess not. Yeah. Now, watch it. Mm. Oh, you brought your cards. I always bring my cards. Will you read them to me the way you used to? <laughs> well, I don't know. Put them back, Daniel. Where do they belong? Alexis, my dear, how good to see you. It's been too long. You look even more lovely than I expected. Why haven't you come to visit me? You know how fond of you I am. How are you, Aunt Anna? Splendid, now that I see you again. Well, aren't you going to... Ask me in. Oh, yes, of course. Daniel, hang that Hannah's coat up, would you please?
I can't tell you how good it does me to see you looking so well, especially considering what you've been through. Well, my sister's death did come as quite a shock to me. Death? Is that all you call it? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. My dear friend Bruno mentioned something about a seance in which you participated, where the word murder was spoken. You'll have to forgive me, but I prefer not to discuss it. I'm sure you've been given all the available information from your dear friend Bruno. Only the vaguest outlines. I was sure I'd get the details from you. I'm afraid not. But my dear child. I don't want to seem rude. But I have never been your dear child. Any more than I was my father's. Now I am sorry, but I do have some other things I want to get done today. I will accept you. Forgive me. I can come another time. Oh, Quentin, my dear, please don't invite me to stay. I've managed to upset Alexis terribly and must leave at once. No, 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 don't try to see me out. I know the way. Goodbye, my dear. I'll come back again. And I promise you, we'll discuss nothing troublesome. Now, take good care, my dear Alexis. Goodbye. Bye. What was all that about? Bruno sent her. Bruno? Now, why would he do that? I wish I knew. Just harassment, I suppose. She knows I don't particularly like her, and I never have. And the moment she walked in here, she immediately began a conversation about Angelique and the possibility that she had been murdered. I don't know, Quentin, sometimes it just gets to be too much. Now, uh, you believe me, I'll, uh, I'll do whatever I can to clear things up as soon as possible. You don't know what those cards mean, and you might as well admit it. I do, too. It just takes a lot of time and concentration to figure them out. I knew I'd find my cards here. He says he knows how to read them, but he really doesn't. Well, perhaps sometime I may teach... What's the matter? Uh, nothing, children, nothing at all. Well, you looked as though one of the cards was telling you something. It scared you. <laughs> Nonsense. I barely looked at them. And next time you want to borrow them, young man, you might ask me first. See? Even she said you didn't know how to read the cards. I know how to read them well enough. And what does that mean? Do you remember which card was right here, upside down? No, not really. Well, that's the card that scared her. It's called the Tower of Destruction. Tell me, she's Angelique, isn't she? You shall know very shortly. What are you doing? <laughs> Preparing an answer to your question. The handkerchief belongs to the woman who calls herself Alexis. A few dried herbs, a sprinkling of bone dust, and we shall see. If this cloth belongs to the one you claim as one of the living dead, and Angelique must be that. The cloth will turn blood red at the sound of my incantation. Will that be enough answer for you? I, uh, I should think so. Come, spirit of death and all things dead. Touch here with your blood red hand all that belongs to you. If this small cloth belongs to death, mark it with your sign, the sign of blood. Just burst into a flame. Now, what does it mean? Some spirit is opposed to us and the truths we want to know. But who? Angelique? Can you tell me who? Very soon, perhaps, I shall be able to. The cards have often come to my aid in times past. 
Perhaps now, but I must have silence. Complete silence. Now will my spirit join the spirits here, so that I see you with eyes more powerful than my own, that I may read the truth revealed before me. Look, eyes, and see what no man sees. Angelique. Angelique is here. She's here at Collinwood. And she is Angelique. And I was right. All along I was right. No, no, wait. All I have seen is that Angelique is here. What form she has, I do not know. She's in her own form. She's posing as Alexis. No, no, the cards do not explicitly say that. Remember, the dead can return in many ways. Some visible, some not visible. All that we know is that Angelique is here. More than that, I cannot say. Angelique. Alexis is Angelique. No, it's not possible. I don't believe Hannah nor her madness. What I saw Alexis do, she explained it all. She can't be Angelique. Angelique is dead. And yet, what I've just seen and heard just now, I wonder. But I don't want to stay here. I want to go and stay with you. I'm scared here. Amy, what is it? I'm just talking to my brother. Oh, let me talk to him a minute, huh? Chris? Quentin. Oh, yes, I, I know. Amy's very upset. But I have a feeling that everything will be cleared up very shortly. Well, why don't you let me talk to her first? No sense her going away without a reason. But there is a reason. Fine, I'll talk to you shortly. Goodbye. Can I stay with him? Well, first of all... I want you to tell me what's bothering you so much. She is Alexis. Now, why don't you tell me exactly what it is about her that troubles you? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. It's just that ever since she came here, she's caused trouble. Maggie left because of Amy, her and... will you do me a favor? I can try. What is it? I want you to wait for a while. I have something to do, something very important. If you let me do this one thing, then we'll decide whether or not you should go and live with your brother. All right? All right. <laughs> Good girl. Angelique! 